Hey kid, hope you had a good weekend. <clears throat> Been here, been running a couple of library books from the library on base. Queen Elizabeth, the Queen's mother, counting one's blessings with the length of the letters edited in the English two page by William Shaw Cross. What is this here? I thought I'd read this bedtime story as a favorite of mine, The New Adventures of Kier George by Margaret and H.A. H. Ray. <clears throat> My own personal favorite of mine has been down to the singing Curious George. It's clear over the years when I was right. Represents the zoo. How many of you all been to the zoo? Y'all should go sometime. Bring your parents, your friends, your local zoo. Anywhere in the world. Some famous sea world. Some kind of festival where animals there. Where would they be? Look at this place. And it don't cost much money. Helps them animals too. Curious George feeds animals. Can you see that? All right. So yeah, don't get too talky to this book at your local library, bookstore. You can even get it online and order it. BarnesandNoble.com. This is George. George was a good little monkey, and always very curious. One day, George went into the zoo. Went to the zoo with his friend, the man with the yellow hat. The new rainforest exhibit was opening, and they wanted to be the first one inside. They even purchased tickets for the occasion. But when they got to the new exhibit, the doors were closed. I'm going to come back later, George, the man said, why don't we visit the other animals while we wait? First, they stopped to watch a zoo to keep a free day seal when he tossed little fish in the air. The seal jumped up to catch them. Then they barked for more. It looked like fun to feed the animals, don't you get it? Big old bear. Squared away his toes. See the zookeeper feeding the animals? That's what they do in early in the morning before even they open. Not in the evening, I guess. It's also what people do. Not zookeepers, but at the horse table, people take care of horses. It's the same kind of appreciation for taking care of animals. Would you like something to eat too, George asked the man with the yellow hat, and he bought a snack for them to share. When they stopped to see the crocodile, George remembered how the zookeeper had fed fish to the seals. He was curious. Would the crocodile like something to eat? George tossed him a treat, and the crocodile snapped it up out of the air. See the crocodile? Look at that. Here's George throwing boo to the crocodile. Here's the fence that keeps kids out. But dogs aren't exactly nice to humans, so don't go near that. Next, they visit the cola. George threw the colas were cute. Here was a friendly one. She was curious too. She wanted to see what George was eating, so he held out his hand to shit. See that? See the colas? Right at the zoo. George shared his treat with Alvin and a baby kangaroo. How many of y'all seen a kangaroo? When you go to the zoo, you'll see one. Some of them got kangaroos. You seen a kangaroo? Feeding the kangaroo. You kid. George was making lots of new friends at the zoo. The lion was already eating, but the hippopotamus tried a snack. Next, he gave a treat to an ostrich. All kinds of animals George was feeding. Then George saw the giraffe. When 
A fun defeated giraffe. Giraffes usually have their heads up high in the trees. But George could see these giraffes would be easy to feed. But as soon as he held out his hand, a zookeeper came running. The zookeeper looked angry. Was he angry with George? George questioned himself. George didn't know, and he didn't want to stay to find out. He slipped away. So the zookeeper coming for him. George didn't want to get into trouble. Because some zoos have signs that say, don't feed the animals. Yeah, look out for those signs. This led to the monkey. And the giraffes were happy to help. You see, George was on an escape route. He didn't want to be caught. But where did George go? The zookeeper looked. Seeing the sign, he was trying his best to hide. But a little monkey can't stay for too long. When George wiggled, the zookeeper was waiting to, I see you, he said. Just then, another zookeeper heard by. Come quick, she yelled. Someone saw the parrot. The first zookeeper led George to a bank. See that? The parrot from our new exhibit escaped and I must help find it, he explained. He told George to wait for a minute. And before he left, he did. He said, don't you know you're not supposed to feed the animals? The wrong food might make them sick. Which is why some places don't allow you to feed the animals. Some foods can get other animals real sick. Don't worry well what you're well with this stuff. George felt awful. He didn't know what he didn't know he wasn't supposed to feed the animals. He didn't want to make them sick. George was looking at the treat in his hand when all of a sudden There's our problem, the zookeeper said, pointing to a hole in the netting. A big bird swooped down and snatched it right up. Now George knew he wasn't supposed to feed the animals, but this one had helped itself. A zookeeper passed by and was happy to see George. He found the parrot, she said. We've been looking all for this bird all day. When she saw George snatch, she said, This isn't the best thing to feed a parrot, but it little won't hurt. Would you like to help me? George was glad to help her. After all the trouble he had caused, instead they went back to the exhibit. There's our problem, the zookeeper said, pointing to a hole in the netting. As the zookeeper discussed how to fix, George had an idea how the bird got out. He climbed up like, a, like only a monkey can. And when he reached the hole, he tied the netting back together. Meanwhile, the first zookeeper returned. Catch that naughty monkey, he yelled, he was feeding the animal. But that little monkey found the parrot, and others are jerked it, told him. And look, he fixed the netting. Now we can open the exhibit. When George came down, all the zookeepers cheered. Finally, the celebration began, and the doors were open. The man with the yellow hat was there, and he was George. He and George got to be the first ones inside. As George walked in, the zookeepers thanked him for all his help. Please visit any time, they said to George. Couldn't wait to come back and see his friends. But next time he remembered unless you're a zookeeper. Don't feed the animals. Being cute as George the monkey learned a very valuable lesson at a zoo. Oh man, was just don't roll over too well eating other people, other animals' food, so watch out. It says there's a sign in front of the animal that said don't feed me. They mean exactly that. You don't want to get that animal sick. So with your, when you're with your parents, you walk around looking at the zoo. You don't understand why. So, don't like being sick. Carrying on, thought I'd read another story. By reading Rainbow. Bring the rain to Capati Plain. By Vernana or Damien. Pictures by Beatrice Byron. Now you have a watch the show Reading Rainbow. Look at that. It's 
read this box of thorn on that show. Oh, the key. Bring the rain to Capelli Plain in that easy tale. This is the great Capati Plain, all fresh and green from the African rain. We see a grass where the ground birds nest in, and patches of shade for wild creatures to rest in. With our shea trees for giraffes to browse on, and grass for the herdsmen to pasture their cows. You see all the animals and giraffes? Look at that. There's a wild forest in Africa. See those cougar, the antelope, the giraffe, the tiger. But one year the rains were very belated, so but very belated that all the big wild creatures migrated. Then the key pot helped to help to end the terrible drought. And this story tells how it all came about. This is the cloud of all heavy with rain that shadowed the ground of Compatty Plain. You see that? And you know, some places have trout. You know, rain. That's bad for animals. This is the grass all brown and dead that needed the rain from the cloud overhead. That big black cloud, all heavy with rain, that shadowed the ground on Capaddy Plain. Yeah. These are the cows all hunger and dry, who moved for the rain to fall from the sky, to green up the grass all brown and dead, they needed the rain from the cloud overhead. The big black cloud all heavy with rain that shadowed the ground in Compatty Plain. See how the cows are praying for trying to find some kind of water. This is Capat watched his herd as he stood on one leg like the big stork bird keep pat whose cows were so hungry and dry they moved for the rain to fall from the sky to green up the grass all brown and dead that needed the rain from the cloud overhead the big black cloud all heavy with rain that shadowed the ground on some paddy plant see keep pat This is the eagle who dropped a feather, a feather that helped to change the weather, fell near Keepot who watched his herd. As he stood on one leg like the big stork bird, Keepot, whose cows were so hungry and dry, they moved for the rain to fall from the sky. To green up the grass all brown and dead, they needed the rain from the cloud overhead. The big black cloud all heavy with rain that shadowed the ground on the paddy plain. See the bird? This is the arrow Keepot put together with a slender stick and eagle feather from the eagle who have to drop a feather. A feather that helped to change the weather it fell near Keepot and watched his herd. As he stood on one leg like the big stork bird, Keepot, whose cows were so hungry and dry, they moved for the rain to fall from the sky. To green up the grass all brown and dead that needed the rain from the cloud overhead. The big black cloud all heavy with rain that shadowed the ground on Capati Plain. This is the bow, so long and strong, and strung with a string, a leather thong, a bow for the arrow, keep pop put together with a slender stick, an eagle of feather. From the eagle who happened to drop a feather, a feather that helped to change the weather. See the bow? That's a big, good sized bow. It fell near Kupa, who watched his herd as he stood on one leg. Like the big stork bird, Kupa, whose cows were so hungry and dry, they moved for the rain to fall from the sky. To green up the grass, all brown and dead, they needed the rain, some cloud overhead. The big 
black cloud. Oh, heavy with rain, but shot the ground. Very black. This was the shot that pierced the cloud and loosed the rain with thunder loud. It shot from the bow so long and strong, and strong was it a string and a leather thong. It bow for the arrow, keep up with together with its slender stick and eagle feather. From the eagle who happened to drop a feather, feather helped to change the weather. See, keep on, he fired it into the cloud. And look, look, here. What happened, kid? It started to rain. It thundered. It fell near Kipa, who watched his herd as he stood on one leg like the big star bird. Kipa, whose cows were so hungry and dry, they moved for the, for the rain to fall from the sky to green up the grass, soft, brown, and dead. They needed the rain from the cloud of red. The big black cloud heavy with rain that shot the ground like a patty plant. You see that? Look at that. Start to rain. So the grass grew green and the cattle fat and Keepak got a wife and a little Keepak. You see it? Now the grass is turning green after all that rain. The cows are looking happy. Who tends the cows now and shoots down the rain when black clouds shadow cut patty? Grass is not dead no more. Damn. Now y'all say your prayers tonight. Remember it is bedtime story. Everybody close to your beds, your blankets, your teddy bears. Let's let's say your prayers.